amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me i once was lost that now am found was blind but now i see twas grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved how precious did that grace appear the hour i first believed well praise the lord welcome to our second episode on building a farm foundation and uh, the second episode is on created for good works and um, let's see uh, uh, before we read ephesians 2 8 to 10 that what the bible is telling us especially about grace and works because there is a difference between grace and works because we are not saved by works but we are saved mm. yeah i will explain that after prayer heavenly father in the name of your son jesus christ you are grateful for giving us this wonderful moment again to hear your word and even to reach to as many people as this word can reach we thank you lord because you are able father to carry the seed all over the world and as this reach, reach uh, the, as it reaches the ground of the hearts of your people we thank you father because you cause it to germinate and people will hear the word receive it with joy and even walk in your ways we are grateful heavenly father that none that will hear this word will remain the same but they will be experiencing the supernatural power of our God as you continue to do mighty things in our lives. We thank you for salvation. We give you praise even for touching our lives and changing us completely to be the vessels you desire to use in this hour we pray that lord that every nation king of glory will experience father the power of your word that is going to reach each and every soul that no soul will be left behind but your word will reach them and will empower each one of them we honor you and give you praise in jesus name amen now as i said in ephesians chapter 2 verse says 8 to 10 the bible says for by grace you have been saved through faith and this is not of yourselves it is as the gift of god not a result of work so that no one may boast for we are his workmanship created in christ jesus for good works which god prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them mm. this word is very very powerful because as we even read Ephesians chapter 2 verses 1 to 10 it is talking about salvation by grace through faith okay so well um we we are going to have a look uh, and see that uh, the, the the main actually the main theme is that God gives his saving grace to Christians uh-huh and uh, we are going to see what happens because uh, some will become confused because we know um our topic for today is created for good works and um here we are it's very very sure that uh, grace is not by uh, i mean we are not saved by 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 our works we are saved through faith okay all right and uh, we are saved by grace and uh, it is by grace we have been saved uh -huh, through faith okay and you know it's also a gift from god and it's not a result of work so you're not gonna boast that you did a lot of work that is why god remembered you and saved you but um, we are going to see that grace is god's favor on those who have broken his law and sinned against him god's grace offers and secures salvation saved delivered from god's wrath at the final judgment so i have been saved means that the christian salvation is fully secured through faith faith is confident trust 
and reliance upon Christ Jesus. This is the gift of God. The, it refers to the entire process of salvation by grace through faith. It is all a gift of God. So we hear, we know that salvation is not by works. It, if it were, then those who are saved would get the glory. Credited for good works, salvation is not based on works. But the good works Christians do are the result of God's new creation. What a blessing to know that we are not, we are created so that when we are saved, when we give our life to Jesus, then our, our, work, our good works as Christians, the good works as Christians, do, uh, will be as a result of God's new creation that is working in us. The salvation that is working in us will be resulting us into doing good works, works that will glorify the Lord. In Titus 2, chapter 11, I mean verse 11 to 14, New American Standard Bible says, for the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all people, instructing us to deny ungodliness and worldly desires, and to live sensibly, righteously, and in a godly manner in the present age, looking for the blessed hope and the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior Christ Jesus who gave himself for us to redeem us from every lawless deed and to purify for himself a people for his own possession, eager for good deeds. You hear that? Yeah. yeah. Well, when we look at uh, also Titus uh, chapter 2, verses 11, the word, uh, uh, the, the word appeared, you know, that the grace of God has appeared, is not for... Uh, is the root for epiphany in English. It sometimes referred to the sudden appearance of the deity. Okay, so um, at the birth of Christ, the epiphany of God's grace, that is Jesus, suddenly burst into the world's darkness, vividly revealing God's nature and ushering in a new age. So we see that um, the behavior, the, I mean the believer's sure and blessed hope, is in the second epiphany when Jesus will return to judge the earth and set up his kingdom. If Christ is going to appear in the future to purify his people from sin, then his people should be purifying themselves from sin right now and cultivating a life of holiness. Grace is not a license to, for, for laziness. Knowing that Christ has redeemed us should make us zealous to do good works while we wait his return. So as we are waiting for the return of our Lord Jesus Christ, we are supposed to be doing the good works, eager to do the good works. And we are supposed to be purifying ourselves, okay? Because we are the people of his possession. We are his redeemed. He has redeemed us from lawless deeds. He has redeemed us from darkness. And he has brought us into his marvelous light. Therefore, we are supposed to be eager to do good work so that we can reach as many people as we can because our lifestyle has changed. The way we speak, the way we walk, the way we do our things is different because for us, we have to be honest. There is integrity in the way we do things. We are faithful in the way we do things because we have Christ in us, the hope of glory. In Titus chapter 3, verses 8, this statement is trustworthy. And, okay, before we do Titus 3, 8, let's do Titus 2, verses uh, 6 to 8. Likewise, urge the young men to be sensible in all things, showing yourself to be an example of good works, uh, good deeds, with purity in doctrine, dignified, sound in speech, which is beyond reproach so that the opponent will be put to shame having nothing bad to say about us, okay? And uh, when we look at this, we know very well that this instruction to the young people, it is telling them to be sober-minded, self-controlled, such spirit-empowered, 
self-restraint enables believers to resist impulsive behavior and their natural appetites. And instead, we are able to do the good works and we are able even to do the, to, we are able even to to excel in things that are of pure uh, i mean we have pure doctrine dignified sound in speech so our speech is not going to be beyond reproach because we are going to have sound doctrine in us so whatever we are teaching is right whatever we are saying is the right thing to say at that right time in titus 3 verse 8 this statement is trustworthy and concerning these things. I want you to speak confidently so that those who have believed God will be careful to engage in good works. These things are good and beneficial for people. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh -huh. You speak confidently so that those who have believed God will be careful to engage in good works. So we are supposed to be careful. Take care so that you all know everything you're doing before you take any step to do something. Ask yourself, is this of God? Is it going to honor the Lord my God? Is it going to glorify God? Is it going to produce res good results for the kingdom of my God? Where before you get engaged even into talking, and especially talking about somebody, when you're talking about somebody, can that, can that be? You are recommending that somebody to somebody else. You are speaking good of somebody else. Don't separate somebody. Don't get somebody out of the way that you smear somebody and is a believer so that when others look at this person, they don't want to get involved. They don't want to get connected with this person. We have been warned. Let whatever that is coming out of us, we be careful. Let's engage in good deeds. That even what you speak, do you know, is uh, it speaks louder. Our words will speak louder than the words we talk. And now is it going to speak louder? If it is a person you know you have differences, don't talk about that person to other people about the different, about how you, that, about how bad that person is. Instead, you can you try to correct that issue that is in between you and that person and so that you can have people see you walking in the right manner with this person so that the Lord will be glorified and you will be careful to engage in good deeds as the Lord has told us in his word and these things are good and beneficial for people. If it is not benefiting that person you're talking about, don't talk about it because even the person you're talking to it is not going to benefit that person. If you know whatever you're saying is about somebody else and is degrading somebody else, bringing reproach to somebody else, don't say, don't tell somebody else because you're ruining others. You're ruining a multitude. You're ruining the entire body of Christ by talking ill of others. Let us have things and words that are benefiting. They are beneficial for people. This is Bishop Dr. Grace Karuki of Amazing Grace International Ministries and Abundant Glory International Ministries, mother to the amazing champions and mother to the CMCs around the globe. Uh, please log into our website at www.agracem.org and partner with us at the same time you'll be able to see more on what we are doing so that you can walk this journey with us. Follow us on Facebook and YouTube at, double, uh, at uh, Facebook is uh, uh, Karuki Bishop Dr. Grace and uh, YouTube is Bishop Dr. Grace Karuki. Like, subscribe and even share and uh, let's hear those comments that God has put in your heart and especially when it regards into building a firm foundation and knowing that you have been created for good works in Christ. God bless you for now as you continue to marvel at the beauty of, our, of the holiness of our God. Shalom, shalom.